Hi there, thanks for joining me for another episode of Mr. Ed Codes, and in this episode, I wanted to explore classic arcade graphics from like the late 70s and into the 80s, stuff like Asteroids and uh, Pac-Man, Defender. Here's Paratrooper. This is an MS-DOS version. There were lots of dif different versions that can get pretty elaborate, like to a, a phone app version, but here's one of the older ones that people my age might remember seeing done in pretty basic graphics here. This was probably done in assembly code just to make things move faster, but you could have coded this in basic. It would have been really slow on a original machine, but on modern computers you could program this in basic or P5JS. It would run pretty fast. You see there's lots of crazy stuff going on here. The paratroopers explode into pieces. You got helicopters flying over the, across the top and your your little paratrooper if he makes it to the bottom if you get so many down there they'll gang up on you so that's the game paratroopers and i really like the animation of the paratrooper itself not so much the exploding but the action of the guy coming down and then the parachute deploying and the character slowing down so that's basically what i'm going to focus on in this uh, video and I have an example of that right here. I'm gonna describe the program procedures and then we'll jump into replicating this code here. So there are two states for our falling guy and overall it goes from the very top to the bottom and then restarts at a random position at the top. But during that fall, a number of things happens. The character shape changes a parachute appears and their speed of descent slows. So we need to capture all of that behavior in maybe 50 lines of code. So the first thing we're going to do is load a new sketch. So I'm just gonna new this guy here. And let's think about what we need to do here. We have a paratrooper. Actually, we have many of them. So instead of writing code for each one of those we're going to write uh, a block of code and then it can handle creating these characters so we're going to make an object we need to hold that into in an array so we want to create a variable i'm going to call it troopers you can call it whatever you want and i'm going to let p5js know that this is going to be an array I haven't assigned that yet, but I'm just getting it set up. And the next thing, I think that's it. I think that's all we need in a global variable. So let's look at our uh, canvas here. We'll set it to the available screen width and height. So we have to create instances of our objects and we have to push those instances into our troopers array so how do we do that we're going to do a four next or i call it a four next loop because i'm basically trained that's what i broke my my teeth cut my teeth on basic programming so it's it's with you forever so this will always be a four next loop even though in p5js in a lot of languages you don't use the next part but if you're my age you know what i'm talking about Oh, my typing's horrible. And my keyboard is the clunkiest, noisiest thing you ever heard. So we're going to create a loop. I want 12 characters, 12 troopers. Sounds good. You could create a global variable here called troops. And then it's, uh, we can just change this variable up here if we want to change the troop numbers. We'll do that. Our loop is going from 0 to troops, 0 to 12. So I think there'll be 13, <laughs> 13 troop members. I want a dozen, so let's cut that back one. It's going to go 0 to 11. That's going to make 12. And we're incrementing one, one at a time. So how do we put, make new instances of this object and how do we put those instances into 
each element of the array. We do that with our keyword or our uh, variable that we used up here, troopers. That's holding our array. P5JS knows it's an array. So when you do I have trooper or trooper? I'm going to put trooper. I don't like tr plural there. Trooper. We're going to use the the keyword push, and then inside the parentheses, that's where our parameters are. We're going to create an object, a new jumper. This is going to be a function, and we're going to create that later on down in the code. But for now, we're just going to imagine that jumper exists and we're going to start using it when we do our setup and our draw. So that's done. Pretty easy so far. So for contrast purposes, I'm going to make the background black just so we can see what's going on better. And down here, I'll give myself some room on the screen, annotate into sketch and then it'll just give me room to go. So in draw, we want to do that loop again. So if you want to, you can just go up here and copy this. Paste it down here. And we're going to take this line out and put a new line in. And this line is uh, a couple lines actually. So in our function, we're going to have a couple methods. We're going to have one that uh, updates the paratroopers position and different attributes. And then we're going to have a function that actually renders uh, those values and makes the character appear on the screen. So we want to use the, the we need to know the, in, the element, the index value. So we have to use the bracket in this case. If you do this, P5JS isn't going to know what you're talking about. So you have to put that element in there, that index value. And then we're going to call, we're going to get a, I put like 50 extra syllables in that. We're going to call update, which is our method in that function. It doesn't exist yet, but it will. And we're going to call render. Uh, yeah, call render. So it will move the object, it's math, and then it will show the results of that change in math by a change in the position of the character or a change in its state. So I think that's it for draw. Pretty simple so far. Take those extra lines out. So now this is where it gets into the nitty gritty. We have to do the function that does all the jumping for us. And if you are familiar with functions, this isn't going to be a big hairy Mary. If you aren't familiar with functions, then pay close attention. Hopefully I won't screw you up. So when we create a function, we have to give it a reference name. And then we have to give it a chance, if we need to, pass parameters into it. So in this case, we're not passing anything into it. But if I wanted to keep track of the jumpers, I could put a variable i there. And whenever I create instances of my jumper, I can create, put an i here. So what I'm doing is I'm taking this i, 0 through 11. Each time it goes through the loop, it's going to pass that value into the function. We're going to jump down here. So the first run around, i is zero. So if I do something like this.id equals i, each one of those objects is going to have a number associated with it that refers to its index in that array. This may come in handy later, but for now, uh, we're not going to use this. But I just wanted to explain that to you in case you were wondering what that was about. Let me take all that out now. If you want to, if you've already typed that in, you can leave it in. <laughs> it's not going to affect the program any. So uh, we want a radius. We want a size of our object. And this will probably be in this program related to the parachute size the most. We're going to use it to make sure that our characters aren't half on and half off the screen as they go down and that they start completely uh, exposed at the top so they're not cut off at the top and they disappear before they get cut off at the bottom. So we need to know the size of our object and I'm going to use uh, 15. Hard code it that way. 
Wow, really? So I'm going to go and pick a random horizontal position starting at its width away from the left going to the width of the screen minus the width of the character. So I'm always bounded. I've got this bounds that the character will never be printed outside of to avoid it being erased or half on and half off the screen. And we're going to start this character out at the top. But we want it to be down the screen a little bit. So I use the term gravity here, but it's really not gravity so much because gravity is a constant. And in this program, gravity will actually change and that's it a more accurate term might be wind resistance but i'm just using gravity because it's easier to keep track in my head but if we were trying to write this in real physical real physics terms and we want to keep those terms consistent with with uh, real life then gravity would not be the variable to use in this case but we're going to use that just so you know that's the pull or how fast the uh character is falling. So we need a, a boolean variable to uh, manage the state of our character, whether they're free falling or whether they have arrested descent with the parachute. So I'm going to name that uh, shoot and I'm going to say that they don't have their shoot to begin with. So I'm going to set that to false. So they're free falling when it's false and their parachute is there when it's true. I need a variable that will uh, act as like the line where the character pulls the chute, pulls the cord, or basically a delimiter between free fall and arrested descent. And I'm going to use pull cord for that, and it's going to be a random amount, and it's going to be bounded. So I want the character to fall so far down the screen before it deploys its parachute, but I don't want it to be near the bottom. So that it's par so that it cr crashes into the ground before the parachute gets deployed. So uh, how I do that is, I just want to multiply the height times a small number. So we'll say 35% uh, of the height, which is 35% down the screen from the top. And I want it to go to. I'm going to drop that down here so you can see. I'll just do that. Okay. So 35% from the bottom, 35% from the top, anywhere in that bounds, the, well, this needs to be more at the top, I think. 55, half the screen. Let's do 50. So it's going to go halfway up the screen. I could have done this and probably should. <laughs> The height will never be zero, so I never have to worry about division by zero. So I can just do that. So we need a method once we have all of our starting variables for our character, and that's what we just did in our function. So when we instantiate our object here, it's going to use these variables. And then as we update it and render it, it's going to uh, adjust those variables and if we need to reset those we're going to do it in another method we're just we're not going to re instantiate an object here we're not going to have thousands of instances of objects in memory that we're not using so in the update method we want the character to go down the screen to fall down the screen we can do this just by incrementing our y variable y coordinate by the speed of that, by the, the size of that increment, which is gravity here. And I kind of want it to fall faster than this because I was looking at it and it just didn't seem like they were falling fast enough. So I'm going to up that a little bit. And why isn't that 
cool. Oh, I didn't finish my function here. When we create a method, or basically a function in a function, you have to give that function a variable name, and you do that a little bit differently. You do it at the beginning, and it's a this dot syntax. And then you can uh, pass parameters into that method inside this parenthesis, and we're not doing that here, so it's empty, but you could pass variables into it that way. Just remember that the variable that you use when it's passed into the method doesn't have the this dot syntax. It's just that variable name. If uh, you didn't know that, if you're familiar with functions, you know that. If you're still learning functions, that may be some new information. <laughs> so um, if it's greater than the pull cord value, so when we pull the, when we reach that value, that random number for pull cord, this dot pull cord, when we've reached it or passed it, we've changed states. And the, f the first thing we're going to do is change the gravity, the speed of descent. We're going to slow that a random amount, and it's going to be pretty much constrained. Let's just choose, maybe there's some heavy characters that fall fast. We're going to open the chute by setting that Boolean character to true. And then we need an, an else condition. I want to have both of those situations covered here. Is that what I did up there? Four and six, right? Okay. Let me type this out and then I'll explain to you what's going on. I have a hard time typing and talking at the same time, obviously. So the first thing we do is we look and see if the character's fallen below the threshold that we pull the parachute cord. If it has, we slow its speed down and we set the boolean character to true so that we can activate the code that opens the chute or generates that graphic. If that condition isn't met, in other words, if we're less than the pull cord threshold, then we're going to keep falling at our rate of descent, which I need to blank that out actually. Let's just X that out because what's gonna happen is Every time, every frame, it's going to pick a new random descent value, <laughs> rate of descent value. I don't want to do that. So uh, if we're less than, um, and I have height divided by two, but this needs to be pull cord, actually. Okay, I think I've got this now. So if we're less than the pull cord, if we haven't reached that threshold, then our chute is closed. If we have, then the chute's open and we slow down. Does that make sense? We'll move this down a little bit so we can see what's going on. I need another set of conditions to handle when the character's falling off the screen. And I want that to be bounded so that the character can restart before they completely disappear off the bottom. So they get close to the bottom, real close, then they'll disappear and restart at the top. Whenever they do restart at the top, I want to reset all those variables. So I could go up there and copy them down, but I'm just because it'd be faster this way. Maybe it's faster. And uh, this dot x equals. And I want to set the parachute back to false. Once we've passed the bottom, we can close the parachute and free fall again. Wee! <laughs> Doesn't sound fun. So still inside the function, I need to create another method. That render method so that we can see what we've actually done. To make the graphics simpler to draw, we're going to translate the position of our character to the coordinates 0, 0. And then anything that we want to do to our character's coordinates, 
we can just factor that with zero zero we don't have to subtract or add anything extra it just makes the life so much easier but in order to keep that translation from affecting everything globally we need to isolate it inside push and pop and that's what those two variables those keywords do push and pop will isolate a number of keyword um, triggers so like the stroke stroke weight color usually the graphic attributes are are limited to this kind of encapsulation a lot of things won't work that way but uh, check the p5.js library to see which ones I think it has an extensive list of what works inside push and pop so once we create our push and pop let's put some stuff in there we need a color for our characters I'm going to use phosphorus green because it takes me back to the good old days when I was looking at an Apple IIe monitor so maybe I want to translate this to begin with So I'm going to translate to this.x, this.y, that's the character's position, and then if I say do point five comma five, well it's going to be five pixels away from the origin of our character and five pixels down from the origin of our character. We don't have to look at this dot x as maybe 320 and then subtract 3, you know, we don't have to do any of that. I really like this because I did old school and you had to keep track of it the old way and it really sucked. So I have my stroke for the the character's bodies. I'm not going to make you know flesh tones and uniform colors and all that. It's just going to be one color, but I will do that later on. I'm going to say zero comma zero with the stroke weight of five as a point will be the head of our character and then everything's going to be kind of based off of the where the head is at the head of our character kind of defines the stroke weights for the other things that we have to draw like the arms and legs and the body I don't think I really need a body on this character mm, I think I'll put one anyway I was just going to attach the legs and arms to the head. I think it would have worked. <laughs> but let's put a body just to be official. So to do the body, I'm just going to start with the head origin, which is 0, 0. But actually, the, the stroke width of the point is going to go past 0, 0 by a few pixels. So I'm going to count for that here. So I'm actually going to start that line 3 pixels below the origin, which should be just on the edge of that point at a stroke weight of 5. Does that make sense? And then I'm going to go down five pixels. Um, that's not a lot. Let's go down six. Six pixels. So we're three, three pixels height for our, our torso. Probably should be a lot more than that. But when the character's falling, I could imagine that they're tilted slightly to catch the air, and that's going to truncate them visually. It's going to foreshorten. So a exclamation point is going to say not. So if this condition isn't true, then it's going to fall. It's going to do what's inside. So if the shoot isn't open, or in other words, if this dot shoot is false, then we're going to do something different. And I'll explain that here in a second because our uh, our body position changes. So let me write this out, and then I'll go through it with you. Some of you may already know what I'm doing here. Any one of the six people who've actually watched this video. <laughs> I really hope I get more views on this video because I put a lot of work into this. I had to re-download re my screen recording software because the other program I was using is total junk. I'm not even going to tell you what it is. Uh, chances are you know what it is. If you've used it, you're like, oh, that's junk. I'm going to try something else. Well, that's what I ended up having to do. I hate learning new software, so I was reluctant to try something else. I was like, maybe I can make this work if I change a bunch of stuff. And 
I could never get it to work well enough and it kept messing up. I would record a video for 20 minutes and then go back through the audios all broken up. If you've watched my past videos, you know this is true. Hopefully I've solved that here and uh, put a lot of work into doing all that just so I could do this video for you guys. So I hope some someone gets some good out of this is the short of that. So I've written this line here. It's going to go from the our view left side of the character to the right side of the character and it's just going to draw a line and that's two arms one line makes two arms if they're straight out <laughs> once the character's parachute opens the arms go down and then I have to make two lines for the arms here's a leg that's at our view the left leg starting at uh, a little bit left of the character way low of the character and then going to just beneath the torso here so this should be six and that should be six it'd probably be probably be okay if it was seven so I've got my arms and my legs I don't need anything else there and I'm gonna close that pop this may not this will seem unnecessary in this program and it actually is unnecessary in this program but if you wanted to rotate those characters slightly to make them look like they're jiggling, then you're going to want to separate the push and pop like I'm doing here. And then it will start to make sense. It's actually doing something. But right now it's not really doing anything, so it'll seem superfluous. But if you change the code, you'll definitely want to add in a, sep a separate push and pop. And that's why I've done it just in advance, because I could see the future. I'm not going to leave this alone. I mean, it's a pretty cool program and it, it uh, has a lot of potential to, to juice it up, to make it look really cool. And I will show you that here in a little bit after I get done with this. So I have my second push and pop here, but what am I going to put in there? I need a condition because the, cha the state has changed. Now the chute's open in the code. We're going we're gonna to assume that the chute is open. Now we need to handle that, that business. So inside push and pop, we're going to do the same sort of things. This is in case you want to color stuff differently. It doesn't really affect anything in this program, I think, unless it makes a different outline. It's just available. This, that, that line is available to you if you want to use it like I said I can see the future I can see you guys want to change the color of things so I'm gonna put that in there just in advance so it's already there I'm like why does that keep indenting there we go now it'll, it'll be cool So if my characters are all lines, why am I filling, filling something? Well, I'm filling the parachute with color. I don't want it to be just a line. I want it to be filled. Again, I want to translate to the origin of my character so that it's easier to deal with everything. And to make a parachute, we're going to do use this code right here. <laughs> The reason why I'm not explaining this is because I had to experiment to get the parachute to come out right. I, I couldn't just look at arc and imagine, okay, this is the numbers I need. I put numbers in my best guess and might have created like a piece of pie. So then I had to figure out, okay, it needs to be wider, it needs to be higher, the arc needs to be more, uh, it needs to... the starting position needs to be different because now it's upside down instead of right side up so after all of that i did all the hard work for you guys i came up with this code right here so 30 is the width and the height so we can use this dot r times two radius times two is your diameter and that will make our parachute our parachute is connected to our character with lines so let's put those in there and those lines are going to be thinner than the arms. So that's why I have that stroke weight of one up there. 
the lines are going to stretch from the character's origin to above the character's head and in our coordinate system now that we've translated to zero zero those values are negatives so negative 10 is 10 pixels above our character uh, to the left I mean 10 characters to the left and the negative 15 is 10 pixels above our character so to the left and above our negatives So I, I'm in the three here, I'm doing the three because I want the lines to come down a little bit. I don't want the lines to look like they're attached to the hair of the character, more to like the neck part or shoulders. So I come down on the Y, but this could be zero, zero, and it would attach to the head of the character. So I come down a little bit that way. Okay. Negative 10 to the left is one line so I want to come in a little bit and make my next line so I'm going to do negative 6 there and I want to attach it to the bottom of the parachute which is negative 15 and that's right here that negative 15 if you want your parachute to be up higher negative 25 just make sure that you make your lines extend that far if you don't you'll immediately know what you did <laughs> So to make the lines on the other side, we just switch the X from negative to positive. We keep the Y negative because we're still going above the character. Okay, there's all your lines from left to right. Now we need to deal with our character's body changing. Their position, their arms have changed, their legs have changed. So let's animate that. So if we didn't have this here because of uh, the condition above up here in the program so when the chute is closed we see this body part well when the ship the the chute is open we no longer see the body because this code isn't being activated so we need a part in here that's going to show the body when the chute is open So here's the arms. Remember I had to say, remember I said I had to use two lines for the arms now, and I want the arms to go down instead of straight across. So I'm using a positive seven for my Y here and a negative seven for the left arm. So I'm going from that position up to the neck and then on the right side of the character, back to the neck. And now the legs, they're gonna be a little bit longer because the body position has changed and now it should be, instead of being tilted and foreshortened, now it's profiled and we should see the full length of the character. So we're gonna extend the legs a little bit further to show that aspect. And then that's gonna go up to the bottom of the waist, which I set at six. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I set that earlier at five and I still got that in my brain. So I think now, if I typed everything in correctly, if we run this code, oh, I'm missing something. Am I missing a bracket? Let me check. I think I am. So that should go to this. That works. It's going to jump. I do this all the time. I should have a better method for this. That's going to our, that shouldn't go to update. All right, <laughs> I think I figured it out. Between render and that last condition, there should be two brackets. So if you don't have two brackets there, you might want to put a bracket in there. And then at the bottom, there should be three brackets because I have my function, my um, end of my method, and then the end of the condition there. So I think I've got it all and then up here I should have a bracket that's the end of my update a bracket that's the end of the condition okay I think I got all my brackets everything's cool let's we'll see if it works and it looks like it's working so if if this is if it's doing this for you congratulations <laughs> and uh, I hope you'll you will take on the challenge of making this a little bit more realistic. And I'll show you an example here.
So this is a more elaborate program, and I've annotated it heavily because it, it kind of is ad advanced. This is pretty much the same engine that we created before, but a lot more elaborate, and it has a lot more add-ons and stuff to make it extra. So what are the differences? If you pay close attention, you can see that my character's arms move in and it pulls the chute. And then some of those characters are left-handed. 10% of them. And so you have to really be keen to catch the lefty. When the parachute inflates, there's a full animation for that. So it's not just appearing and then, you know, and it's not there and then the next frame it is there. That's the, the code that we just did. If you wanted to make that more realistic, you could step through that process, which is I did here. So there's a partial deployment, and then there's a fully deployed, where the chute actually inflates. And remember at the beginning of this video, I told you about this.id and passing i into the function? Well, if you do that, you can keep track and label your paratroopers. So here's number 7, here's number 5. Let's see who's this guy here. Number 2. So if number two vanishes off the screen, and if you pay close attention, is it this one? No, I missed him. Where'd he go? Oh, he's right there. So here he is, maybe. Yeah, you see, it's keeping track of the, the one specifically. So if you had a game, maybe some of your paratroopers are premium, and some of them don't shoot those. <laughs> and you could keep track of that with the IDs. Just something to think about there, how you can really add to the sophistication of their you could have like a ship at the bottom a character controls the ship and they have to move back and forth to catch the paratroopers before they go into the shark infested waters i mean it, you could turn this into a game pretty easily and aren't these characters just cool they have flesh tones they have hands and feet uh, they rock back and forth they fall out of the sky all funny they fade out of uh, fade out at the bottom and then restart at the top and I also have I'll show you real quick if you want to stick around and see this they change from day it changes from day to night and I actually have stars that will appear over time so th there's background stars in this one and it goes from night to day and it's almost a game it's it's on its way to being a game so that's a, the, a look at classic arcade graphics from the paratrooper style game. You remember the paratrooper game and the little shoots that come out. Now these guys, <laughs> all of their shoots open. In paratrooper, there's, you could shoot the parachute and then the guy would fall and explode into blood. That was kind of gross. I was going to make a game where you could shoot the paratroopers as they fall out of the sky. And then I was like, that's, that's really macabre. I mean, do you really want that? So I thought maybe flip it to a more positive thing and you're rescuing them. You're keeping them from going in the water. So it's a positive implicitor instead of death and destruction. <laughs> so that may be something to think about there. All right, thanks for joining me. I appreciate it. And hopefully I will upload this video. No promises. I'll review it and see what happens. But I've got new software now, new audio and hopefully these videos will be better and you can catch more if you hit subscribe hit the bell if you like this hit like leave a comment if you have a question leave that and i'll be sure to get back to you and as always until next time take care